Welcome everybody. I just wanted to come on briefly. I had a Facebook post the other day that the Lord put on my spirit and I basically wrote the next time you want to speak about what a demon is doing, speak out what Jesus is doing. Isn't that a great word? The next time you want to speak out what the devil is doing, speak out what Jesus is doing. That's some wonderful free advice for you. People get so focused on what the devil is doing, it amazes me sometimes. Why don't you get your focus on what Jesus has already paid for, what he has already done, and what he is doing now? Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for you right now, today. I think that's a much more important thing to, to keep your focus on than what any demon is doing. I love the damn Muller quote, the devil is a cut off withering branch with no chance of redemption. So why are you so focused on him and concerned about him? And while we're on this topic, you know, I wrote some things about curses. People are so focused on generational curses. Why don't you turn that around and get so focused on generational blessings? People will actually post things about generational curses. They'll talk about that they feel like they're under a curse. If you read the word and you read in Exodus and, and there's stuff I believe in Deuteronomy also, but in, in the book of Exodus where God is saying that he visits the iniquity to the third and fourth generation, if you would at least read to the next verse, the next verse after that in Exodus, he says, but he shows mercy and love to a thousand generations to those who love him. So it just, it baffles me that people want to gravitate towards the negative side and not focus on the positive side. Just read the next verse to it that he shows mercy and loving kindness to a thousand generations to those that love him. I'm speaking to people that I know truly love the Lord. You love God. Know today that he loves you. The Bible says if God is for you, who could be against you? You are more than a conqueror. You're going to make it. I don't care what the doctor said. I don't care what your best friend said. I don't care what a family member said. If they spoke something negative over you, I break it off of you in Jesus' name and say you're going to live. You're going to get through this. It's going to be okay. The Father loves you. He cares about you. He has wonderful plans for your life. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. That's who our Heavenly Father is. And I gave a wonderful quote. Well, the quote, I'm quoting myself. <laughs> the Bible. When you're reading it, it's more than just reading something on paper. When you're reading it, it has to go from just something that you're reading and it has to go into your spirit and you believe it and you believe it in your heart and you speak it out and confess it with your mouth. You know, it's not just declaring, I'm not sick, I'm not sick, I'm not going to be sick, I'm not going to be sick. 
that which you're declaring is by his stripes I am healed. What you're declaring are the blessings of the Lord. Speak those over yourself. All the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. Speak, I shall live, I will not die. It says, let the weak say, I am strong. So you may be feeling weak, but you speak out, thank you, Lord, that I am getting stronger each day. Thank you for strength. Thank you that I am healed. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing in my life. Thank you for provision. Thank you for prosperity. Thank you that I'm a prosperous person. God actually wants you to prosper. It's a shame that the body of Christ is scared to talk about that one. That might be my, in a couple weeks, because I already up. I already got something ready for the next daily, weekly devotional, but I'm going to give a teaching on prosperity. You want to talk about rocking a boat? <laughs> Get in the boat on that one and hang on tight about prosperity, because I'm going to talk about it, and we're going to talk about what the Bible says about it. I love you guys. I'm so fired up right now. I could go into a whole teaching with that right now, but I'm going to hold off on it. I already got all my scriptures ready for it. So to wrap this one up, Christ has redeemed us from every curse of the law, becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is anyone that hangeth on a tree. Jesus loves you. He's paid it all. Be free today. Live free. I don't care what you did in the past. The Father doesn't care about what you did in the past, whatever it was. There's no sin so deep that his love is not deeper. Today, you can know beyond a shadow of a doubt, that you are forgiven, you are washed clean, and the Father loves you. I think some people just need to even repent for not even, not trusting the goodness of the Father. And it's as simple as just saying, I repent, Father, for not trusting your goodness. That's all. And you jump right back on the Father's lap. And you move forward with it. It's okay. You don't have to beat yourself up. The price has already been paid. Jesus took the beating. He paid the price. He took your shame. They spit on him. They plucked his beard out. They slapped him in the face. They pushed the crown of thorns into the top of his head. They gave him a horrific beating that says he was marred more than any man. They pierced his hands and feet. They stuck a spear in his side. You don't need to do this to yourself. That was all put upon him. So you can be free. And for people that feel, well, I just don't know that he loves me. Hit the rewind button. He proved his love. He, he demonstrated his love of everything that he paid for to bring you back to your original value. You don't pay a high price for something that has no value. The price has been paid. The Father gave his Son. Jesus willingly laid down his life for you. He said no one takes his life. He laid it down for you. So you could be free today. Live free. That's the best thing that you could do today. Be free. 
If you have never given Jesus your life, it's as easy as ABC. Admit that you have sinned. Believe in Jesus, putting your full trust and faith in him and him alone. And see, make a commitment to him that you are going to live the rest of your days following him, living for Jesus. You recognize that you've sinned, you repent of your sin, and you receive Jesus. It is so easy. I keep repeating that. You don't have to jump through a bunch of hoops. I love this quote that just popped up in my spirit. Religion is man on a quest for God. Christianity is God reaching down to man. <laughs> Amen. Repeat this after me if this message has touched your heart. Heavenly Father, I repent of my sin. I turn my back on sin, and I turn my heart to Jesus. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. I believe in my heart that God has raised you from the dead. Wash me, cleanse me, fill me, use me, fill me with your Holy Spirit right now. Thank you that today I am brand new and I am forgiven. I am washed clean. I will not look back. I will not live in the past. I'm going to go from glory to glory and faith to faith just as the Bible talks about. I love you guys. I'll see you soon. We have a prayer line. If you need prayer about anything, Gina and I would love to pray for you. The phone number is 443-405-2554. Call us. We'll pray for you. And we'll give you truth. And we'll give you the truth and love, because we really do love people. We love you. We love you if you are a Christian right now. And we love you if you're an unbeliever. We love you if you're agnostic. We love you if you're an atheist. We love people. Because the Father loves people. So if you want somebody to pray for you about any concern that you have. We would love to pray with you. Again, the phone number is 443-405-2554. Understand that you are not under a generational curse. You are under generational blessings. As a born-again believer, when you give your life to Christ, when you repent of your sin, turn your back on sin, you're born again. And then don't do things that open doors up. If you're going to live a life and say you're a Christian, but you're going to do things that open doors up and choose to live in unforgiveness or choose to lie, or choose to steal, or choose adultery, or choose to sin, to willfully sin, then you will open doors up to the demonic realm. But you need to know that you are under a blessing. And nobody is going to curse what God has blessed. Say that. Somebody needs to say that out loud. Say it with authority. Say it like you mean it. Nobody is going to curse what God has already blessed. I love you guys. I'll see you soon. Be blessed. Be blessed in Jesus' name.